In the past few videos, we have been focusing on analysis and design. Now it is time to move on to game asset creation. In this two-part tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the creation of my Jelly Bear game asset in Krita. I'll start off with one piece of advice about your workflow. I advise you to take it slow in the beginning, whenever you create a new game asset. In this case, I'm working with a flat into a tablet on my desk. It is hard to make precise strokes. It's also the start of the day when I make this character. And often, as a game artist, you'll start off the day making the foundations for your game assets. This foundation is critical. The initial sketch and the initial blocking are going to make your job that much easier during the rest of the day. You want to focus on the shape of your monster here to make it perfect for the game. And then when you move on to shading the character, you want to only work and focus on shading and colors. You don't want to have to pay attention to the shape anymore and to refine it over and over again. Basically, focusing on precision and working slow and efficiently is very good for learning. You are giving yourself the time to visualize your strokes and your form on the canvas. I really advise you to take the time to draw precise lines. On the internet, you're likely to see experienced professionals scribble really fast on their canvas and get beautiful images in the end. They can do that because they have thousands and thousands of hours of experience drawing and because they draw every day and all day long. After a while, certain shapes become so ingrained in your brain that you become able to get them out very, very fast without even thinking about it. Bouncing back to working slow, it's not only a good way to learn, it's a necessary path you have to take. And it's also a sustainable way of working. You can go at a steady pace and not burn your energy at the start of the process, at the start of the day. Because in a typical day at work, those sketches and the blocking of your game assets is the first things you are going to do. These are the first minutes you get down drawing or painting. So you still have to warm up and you have to keep going for about eight hours after that. Let's talk about sketching. On paper or with a Cintiq, I drew differently than you can see right now on the canvas. I draw entire shapes all at once. But with a flat tablet, I can only draw short arcs and straight lines more or less precisely. Because of that, I break down the outlines I want to draw in a collection of lines and I rotate the canvas to draw at a comfortable angle. I'm using those sketches to warm up. It's the start of my workday, so you can see that I produce very messy lines and it's not accurate at all. I'm doing two versions of the same design here. The first one is angular, with a flat forehead. It is supposed to look more like a bear or a teddy bear. The other one is round, has a more expressive face and is a bit more like a mole, or at least it resembles a mole a tiny bit more than the other design. Let me throw in a very important technique to check your mistakes while drawing. Press M in Krita to activate the symmetry mode and it will allow you to see much better if something is out of place on your design, on your drawing, or if your character is skewed or drawn at an angle, which happens often. Another quick tip, you can use straight lines to ensure that your character is straight. To do this, you have to select the line tool in Krita and then you have to shift click on the canvas to constrain the line to a certain angle. When you have those guides on the canvas, it's very easy to see if your character is skewed or if it's rotated. Although I am drawing lines, I am always thinking about the characters in terms of volumes. Their body is like the head of a capsule. Their muzzle is a flattened cylinder and their ears are two beveled cylinders. We need to understand that to be able to abstract the bears to their core components and to properly animate them to draw them at any angle later on. By now, you know a lot about the design already. So I'm not going to comment more on the sketch and we're going to move on to coloring. How do we get started with colors? There are a few paths you can choose from. You can start in grayscale, focus on the form and lighting, and then color the character from that. Or you can start directly with colors with a strong color palette. Both approaches are important to know and to be able to use as professional game artists. 
But here, considering the flat style of the monster, the simple cartoony shape it has, I'm going to start with colors and I will use a desaturate filter layer to keep values in check. I'm not drawing a super tight silhouette here like I've been showing you in the past. I notice that my work feels much more organic if I don't constrain it from the get-go. I'll be painting freely and fixing the alpha last as Krita makes it pretty effortless. There is an option in the curves filter to only work on the opacity of the selected layer. You may be wondering when you have your empty canvas like that how you choose the starting color. It really depends on your workflow. I start with a desaturated mid-tone for painterly assets like these. Because it gives me a lot of room to add darker and lighter values later on. I build my value composition with the colors I add and also using filters like curves or levels. It's an organic process. I don't have a fixed color palette from the very beginning. Also, note that it's much easier to choose a proper color palette if you have some reference background to place your character in, or if you already have characters for your games from which you can derive the colors. Here, I started with a relatively red brown and desaturated tone, simply because I know it won't be part of a cold environment. I want it to be part of a warm environment in which the colors are going to be relatively warm. As soon as I have a color I like, I start brushing in on the canvas really fast. You can see that I work with the mixer brush engine a lot in Krita. And if you're looking for the preset, sorry, but it's a custom one. Krita's default brushes are too dull for me, and I couldn't find any satisfying brush pack online. With brushes, the key is to find the tools you like, the brush shapes that work for you and you only, and to tweak the presets to fit your very needs, to fit your style and your taste. I want to use brushes that can put thick dry paint on the canvas and that allow me to mix colors at the same time. That's the fastest way and the most comfortable way to paint for me right now. Hence, I use this flat brush that does just that. To create the base shading of the monster, I mostly use the hue shifting technique, which we studied a while ago. As the base color is a brown, I'm going to use yellows and oranges for the highlights and redder colors for the shadows. I could do some split toning and use purples and blues for more natural shadows, but as I told you, I'd rather paint the bear to work well in a warm environment. Note that at that point and from now on, I don't retouch the shape of the monster anymore or I only make really small adjustments. That's why it's very important to check that the sketch is straight during the blocking phase because then you can focus on your shading and your colors. The shading of my characters is often very straightforward. I consider that the light kind of comes from the top, a little bit from the left and that there are almost enveloped by global illumination, by some bouncing light. That's why I put the shadows at the bottom, but on the right side of the monster, I'm putting a bit of highlights. These highlights help to define the volume of your characters or your objects in a game. They also make it so that your game assets pop on the background. Notice how the right ear that's in the back is darker than the rest of the character. In general, with game assets, we make clear separations in terms of values between what's in the foreground of the character, what's the first layer of the character, and what's the second the background layer of this character. Especially with side-scrolling games, as we superpose elements that tend to be flat, it's very important to use that trick to give a sense of depth and volume to the character. Another important note is that I don't use a pure black for the muzzle and the eyes. I consider that a pure black in the game would correspond to a total absence of light. The eyes are lit by the environment that is warm, so I'm adding a little bit of warmth to them. I build my values slowly, over time. I chose a desaturated mid-tone at the very beginning because of that. Adding darker and lighter tones slowly really helps me to keep my values in check. To me, it's way easier to add contrast than to remove it. That is why I'm following that route. And we will wrap up this part right here. If you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer them in the next part. In the next video, I will talk about the second bear, 
I will also add dirt to ground this character into the game environment. And I will show you the tricks I use to make polishing my game assets a little easier.